Hey, this is Digital Byte Computing. Today we're going to talk about what the IT infrastructure manager does. We're going to go over their roles and their responsibilities. So let's look at that right after this. Hey, my name is Amelia. I work in the IT industry. And today we're going to be talking about the infrastructure manager. As the name suggests, the infrastructure manager is responsible for all of the IT infrastructure in a business. They may work very closely with other IT manager sort of positions within a business. Uh, they could have, for example, a service desk manager, they could have an operations manager, there could be other IT managers, security managers, perhaps reporting into a central IT director or a CIO, chief information officer, or a CTO, a chief technology officer. But really the infrastructure manager in a nutshell looks after all of the backend infrastructure that a lot of people in the business may not even know exists. Your servers, your networks, um, your firewalls, perhaps your backend phone systems, uh, your data center management, etc. But let's cover each of these in time. So the infrastructure manager will probably have a team or teams of people reporting into them um, that look after all of the backend infrastructure. Roles like your systems administrator or system engineers, your network admins and network engineers, your storage people, um, your security guys perhaps, uh, they're all gonna be looking after all of their infrastructure and fall under your umbrella. So the day-to-day -day administration and running of all of your server fleet. So this is all of the servers that are inside the business, right? All of the servers, your file servers, your print servers, your um, application servers, your database servers, you've got Active Directory, right? So your domain controllers, those sort of things. Really all of the servers would fall under their domain, making sure that they're updated, making sure that they're kept maintained, making sure that they, you know, when there's a requirement to build new servers that they're built, when they're decommissioned, that they'll get decommissioned by your staff. Servers could be both physical and virtual. So physical boxes, physical servers sitting on premise, they could be sitting elsewhere. And then you've got virtual servers, again, sitting on premise on your site, or they could be sitting perhaps somewhere else, such as on the cloud, um, looking after tools such as AWS or Azure in the cloud, for example. The servers may be residing on premise in your particular head office, for example. Uh, there could also be aspects of your infrastructure sitting offsite. They could be sitting at a data center. Uh, so the infrastructure manager looks after all servers across all of the sites, across all of your, you know, perhaps it's cross state, cross country, they may all fall under your infrastructure management responsibilities, uh, but then all the data centers as well. Everything that runs into those data centers falls under your domain. So we touched on servers, we also have all of the network equipment as well. So all of the switches, the routers, the firewalls, um, any load balances, all the links coming into the business, all the links going out of the business. For example, you, you know your, your internet links, your links cross sites. You know If you've got a site A and a site B, and there's a direct link via an MPLS or something similar, that falls under your responsibility as an infrastructure manager also. Then you've got all of the storage. So the SAN, the NAS, the storage area networks, the network attached storage, big storage devices that essentially contain all of the data where your servers uh, live, essentially, where your server infrastructure lives. We touched on servers earlier as well. We touched on physical and virtual. The virtual servers generally are gonna be running on some form of hypervisor technology, which is physical servers running you know, multiple virtual machines within it. Uh, the big ones in the market are VMware, uh, Hyper-V by Microsoft, and your Citrix Zen server fleet also. So all of that domain falls under that umbrella of infrastructure management, and perhaps under the systems administrator, systems engineer domain. Then you've got all your telephone systems. It really depends on what sort of phone system you've got, but a lot of the phone systems may fall under the domain of the infrastructure manager. The, the phone systems um, in uh, the meeting rooms, the phone systems at everybody's desks, uh, if they're just standard landline connections, or if they're connections over VoIP, right? Voice over IP, so the network phones, um, all of the backend infrastructure, everything that it connects to, the links out to your third party providers. So all the server management, the network management, the storage management making sure that all of that equipment is maintained. Putting new equipment in, taking new equipment out, taking new equipment, taking old equipment out. So going into the racks, 
physically racking things, removing things, uh, making sure that the devices are patched regularly. You know, there are regular patches for your servers and for your network equipment, making sure that they're patched, organizing outage windows, communicating with the business or with other IT heads of outage windows or upgrades to your infrastructure. They're also pop, you know, possibly gonna be required to speak directly with vendors, uh, speaking with you know, your big provider vendors, you know, your Dell EMCs, your IBMs, your HPs, those sort of guys. Um, for procurement of goods, um, you know they need some new, you know, like a new server. They need a new SAN, a storage device. Uh, they're going to be dealing with high-end vendors to acquire or do some form of procurement for this equipment. Um, if they've got the, st the skills in house, the racking and the stacking of this equipment interacts, or they could be required to deal with you know third-party providers to get experts in and to actually assist with the um, development or the installation of this new equipment. A lot of IT infrastructure managers are also responsible for all of the security in a business. So making sure that the security in the business is as strong as it can be. You want to prevent intrusions into your network from internal or even external, right? Internal, a lot of people forget about, but a lot of the, um, there's many attacks that happen internally by just staff just either going out and browsing something on the internet or bringing in their own PC or bringing in their own network, uh, um, USB device or something, plug it into the network and then your whole network goes down. So they're really responsible for all the security, making sure that the firewalls are correct, making sure that there's appropriate antivirus spyware protection on your network, on your desktops, and also, especially on your servers, um, perhaps looking after uh, proxies, making sure that only the relevant um, uh, uh, information is accessible or, ac or accessed uh, from within your network. They could also be responsible for the entire uh, disaster recovery and backup scheme of an organization. So this is, um, you know, you've got your server guys, for example, you've got your systems and your network, uh, your systems guys especially, who are looking after your servers, should also be responsible on top of patching and maintaining, but also the day-to-day -day backups of these servers. So they could be reporting to you the state of those backups every single day, making sure that the backups have been successful or not. Um, but then in the bigger scheme of things, on top of your backups, uh, the overall disaster recovery plan for an organization falls under that infrastructure manager. Um, working very closely with other business heads, um, working closely with the, with the BCP, the business continuity plan, to make sure that the disaster recovery plan matches up very well with that um, and, co and essentially colludes together. Um, the DR plan essentially will, will outline what to do in the case of a disaster. If a disaster happens, this is the alternate location that we're going to meet, um, and this is the infrastructure that we need to set up, we need to configure, etc. cetera. Um, on top of that, making sure that the infrastructure is set up for disaster recovery, right? Making sure that all of your infrastructure is set up correctly enough from a redundancy perspective, so that all your equipment is set up for multiple levels of redundancy, but in the scenario where your entire data center was to go down or the site goes down, that everything can come up at an alternate location. Uh, working closely with that DRP, with a disaster recovery plan, outlining the steps in that DRP to specify in the disaster, in this particular scenario of disaster, what we need to do to bring everything back up in site B, falls under their domain. So they're gonna work very closely with his experts, with his network and systems guys, uh, to make sure that the DR plan can get executed. And they may also be responsible for maintaining a regular disaster recovery uh, schedule, perhaps an annual test where they essentially test their entire disaster recovery plan and make sure that it does work so that they are prepared in the, in the real case scenario if something was to happen. Generally, the infrastructure manager should be somebody that's fairly technical, or at least has come from a technical perspective, uh, just technical background in my opinion. Uh, this person should be able to uh, be an escalation point for, those, uh, for the guys that work for them um, so that they can escalate up to them and that they should have some form of knowledge to be able to uh, you know, help on that uh, you know, if they need to. But really further than that, somebody who's got a real architecture brain, you know, they don't have to be necessarily an enterprise or solutions architect, but at least understand how all the pieces fit together. How does the network talk to the servers and talk to the storage and how does the security need to be set up where do I need to put my proxies? Where do I need to put my load balances? What subnets should I be using? What VLANs should I be using where? How should I be segregating my office? Um, all those sort of things. Really the, the overall IT, um, they're really the head of the IT setup 
uh, should be under their, well, it, it is under the infrastructure manager's um, configuration and, and, and management, but understanding how it all fits from a big picture will help them. So they can lead the strategy for the IT, for the IT infrastructure. They don't just comment and let their guys do it, right? Let the systems guys, the network guys do it, but they can actually lead because from experience, they know how it all fits and they can make the calls on this is where we wanna take our IT from an infrastructure perspective. So that's really in a nutshell what I think an infrastructure manager does. Now in certain organizations, this role can be a little bit merged with an IT manager or an IT operations manager. So in some places, the infrastructure manager may also get the, uh, the level ones and the level twos, which are your help desk guy, your services guys, your desktop guys, are uh, all reporting into the infrastructure manager. So they could be responsible for the help desk, they could be responsible for um, essentially the IT analysts in the business. Uh, so they may have a bit more of an operations perspective where the infrastructure manager is responsible for all things IT. It's very rare that the IT infrastructure manager falls into management of developers, but I have seen it where some developers can report in. But look, it can change from, from organization to organization. But really, in a nutshell, it's managing the infrastructure. Now, as I said, uh, you've got uh, infrastructure team, like you've got a team underneath you as an infrastructure manager. So the systems guys, the network guys uh, fall under you. So there's an element of management and leadership required for the infrastructure manager from a, um, a, a person's, a resources perspective. So day-to-day -day leadership of this team, mentoring, uh, being involved in you know, recruitment processes for recruiting staff, disciplinary processes for the internal staff, making sure that the staff are doing what they need to be doing, uh, making sure that they're involved around salary negotiations, regular catch-ups, those sort of things with their staff also. So that is an infrastructure manager. Really, in a nutshell, they're responsible for all of the infrastructure, all of the IT infrastructure in a business. All of the servers, the network, the storage, the data centers, making sure that everything is operational, running correctly, it's updated, it's kept maintained, it's secure from you know intrusions, from hackers, uh, all those sort of things. So that is my summary. I would love it if you commented, if you found this helpful. Hopefully you did. Uh, let me know if there's anything that you think I missed or anything that shouldn't have been included in that. I would love to hear it. I'd love to hear your comments as well. It helps me to grow my channel and spread more of the love. Uh, but look, next time we'll talk about some other stuff, but I hope you found this helpful. Give me a thumbs up and we will talk to you next time. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel, Digital by Computing, just on the button there for more videos.